Okay, in this set of notes, we are going to talk about lipids, and that would be part four of our biochemistry unit. So lipids are macromolecules that are composed of mainly carbon and hydrogen. So you're going to see these long hydrocarbon chains with lots of lots of carbon and hydrogen. So all these bonds are basically trapped energy, potential energy. So um, this is why lipids, fats are going to be very high in calories because you can break these bonds and release the energy. Um, the, the lipids actually are hydrophobic and they interact with one another through hydrophobic interactions and also van der Waals and water is going to exclude them. So, and therefore they're going to form these lipid droplets. And um, they, there's a, an important part of the lipids that are going to make up membranes. So we call these phospholipids and you can see here how they arrange to form a phospholipid bilayer. So we're going to discuss those. The um, lipids also provide thermal insulation, they cushion organs and such, and the most important lipids that we're going to look at are typical fats, phospholipids, and I will say a couple of things about steroids. So what is a typical fat molecule look like? So this would be a triacylglycerol or triglyceride. So you can see that even though lipids are not true polymers, we can break them down into smaller units. So what are those smaller units? Glycerol, and then we also have fatty acids. So glycerol is shaded in gray here, and you can see that there are three functional groups. So we have an OH here, an OH here, an OH here. And the way we build a fat molecule is by allowing those functional groups to react. And you can see fatty acid, mainly hydrocarbon chain. However, here's the um, functional group and the hydroxyl group is going to be reacting. So it's going to produce water, HHO. So we're looking at H2O. So it means a bond between this oxygen and carbon is going to form. Well, this bond is called ester linkage. So if you're looking at a triacylglycerol molecule, the typical fat molecule, you're going to see that you're going to be making three bonds because you have three fatty acids, one, two, three, connecting to one glycerol head. And therefore, water is going to be removed here, here, and here, and we say um, the condensation reaction dehydration synthesis um, results in the production of water. So this is what a typical fat molecule, triglyceride, looks like. So now imagine if you have to break down this fat molecule, what would you have to do? The answer is you would have to add three water molecules to be able to hydrolyze these bonds and separate fatty acids from glycerol. Now, obviously, if you're going to break down fatty acid, notice you have lots and lots of um, bonds in here, so you would need to use a lot more water. So we're talking about losing weight and getting rid of fat. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to drink water because if you don't think about it you cannot break these bonds so you need to be able to do hydrolysis okay so we have two different types of fatty acids so one of them is called saturated fat and the other one is called unsaturated fat so saturated fats are going to have only single bonds no double bonds therefore you want to observe this linear um, straight uh, line this neat um, simple simple structure it's going to be um, just a linear form. But if you look at the unsaturated fat, there's going to be one or more double bonds between the carbon. So you can see one is right here and another one is right here. If you only have one double bond between the carbons, we call that monounsaturated fat. If you have more than one, you call it polyunsaturated fat. Okay, so what properties do we get because of the, the number of bonds that are different? So saturated fats, if you look at them, you can see this is a short version of how we represent hydrocarbon chains. So you can see there are no double bonds. So that means they can actually compact really nice and tight. So they come close together and therefore they will give us or they will be solid at room temperature. And most animal fats are going to be solid. But if you look at unsaturated fat, notice here's a, a fatty acid with a double bond. So it causes that bend or I say a kink in that leg, in that fatty acid tail. And this kink, this bending, is going to prevent um, the fats from solidifying at room temperature. So they're going to be liquid. So those tails are wiggling somewhat. Um, as far as the different types of fat, uh, fatty acids, remember I talked about the cis and trans, so here it is again, you can pause and read it again, but just the main, the main key here was that the slight difference in the hydrogen position can actually have detrimental health effects if you consume them. Another type of fat that we want to discuss 
is going to be a phospholipid. So phospholipid, you can see immediately that this is going to contain phosphorus. So here's another element. So phospholipid is going to consist of two main components. So we're going to say there is a hydrophilic head that contains a phosphate group, and there is also choline, and then obviously glycerol. And then we are going to have hydrophobic tails. So those are hydrocarbon chains, and those are going to be attached to the hydrophilic head. So here, we only have two hydrophilic tails, not three, because a typical fat has three. So hydrophilic heads will be, they will have high affinity to water, and hydrophobic tails will not have affinity to water. So it means phospholipids will arrange into a very special phospholipid bilayer and make up our membranes. So all cells, doesn't matter what kind of organism we're looking at, all cells will have a phospholipid bilayer. And that bilayer is going to be arranged like this. Basically, the heads are going to be exposed to the external environment. So that would also be aqueous solution. So there's water everywhere. And then the internal environment, you also know it's mainly water. And then you can see the legs of those tails are going to be facing one another away from the water. So this is why we have this special arrangement in cell membranes and um, membranes are important because they're going to be regulating the traffic what goes in the cell what goes out the cell but that's a story for another day and then also just to remind you that i'm going to go back here and mention this word that i didn't um, because they have two regions meaning hydrophobic and hydrophilic region we call phospholipids amphipathic and if you look in this protein, for example, it's also embedded in the membrane. So this protein is hanging out, part of it is hanging out with the, with the heads, and then part of it is hanging out with the tail. So what does that tell you? That means this protein can also be amphipathic, okay? And the last part of this set of notes would be steroids. So steroids are also going to be, obviously these are lipids, and they're going to be made up of carbon rings. And there are four fused carbon rings, and sometimes they will have see a slight little variation here and then you know that this entire molecule is going to be hydrophobic and however there is a little section that's hydrophilic and in the case of cholesterol so I'm gonna go back and point out where is the cholesterol so you can see cholesterol is embedded in the membrane and we said there are four rings so here's one two three four and notice how these four hydrophobic rings are hanging out with the rest of the uh, fatty acids because they were hydrophobic and then you had the OH group which was right here so that's hydrophilic and you can see it's hanging out with the rest of the heads that are hydrophilic so you can see how cholesterol embeds itself in the membrane animal cells only not plant and they're going to help with the structure so we're going to discuss more about cholesterol when we get to the membrane um, membrane unit and cell unit and then there are other steroids like stress hormones you can see and these are also lipids, and these would be sex hormones, and so forth. All right, I will see you in the next set of notes. We'll discuss nucleic acids.